Hi, my name is Howie, and uh, this is going to be my talk about characterizing coupled transport phenomena using lock-in thermography and laser scanning. So multiple things can happen when a battery is put under an electrical load, lithium ions moving between the electrodes can induce their own volume changes, and the flow of current will generate heat while the electrochemical chemical reactions will also do the same. The two effects are the for the most part comparable, but in this experiment where prismatic cells were held in compression against load sensors, we measured the force response from either an SOC or temperature stimuli. Depending on where you stand on this contour plot, um, either one of these effects can become the major contributor to the stress evolution. For example, when you're in the emptier states, a few degree change in ambient can, replica can be replicated by a 10% swing in SOC, while when you're past 50%, uh, you need closer to a 20% swing uh, in order to generate a similar response. The current distribution in large format pouch cells are determined by their tab and geometry design and can become very non-uniform as a result of that. It will generally travel between the two tabs in the path of least resistance, which leads to non-uniform thermal and mechanical side effects. This becomes a problem because cells can become irregularly degraded and catastrophic failure mechanisms, such as thermal runaway, does not require the entire battery to reach a certain onset temperature. It can occur locally and then spread to other parts. These inefficiencies, however, give an extra pathway to probe mechanisms that are occurring inside from measurable effects on the outside. So we can measure temperatures using, a, uh, using an IR camera, and we can measure dilation using laser profiles. So we can infer material properties based off of how the battery reacts to certain current input signals, and said properties can be used to get a more holistic view of battery state of health. So we developed a streamlined 3D model that just captures essential physics with, the small, with as small of parameter sets as possible. An experimental setup was designed and created as shown in the left-hand side image. The rig was designed to do lock-in thermography, but the battery is hung vertically to avoid insulating the two largest spaces where heat can be dissipated. The surface is painted matte black to aid with reflections and gives off a uniform emissivity. It is not strictly required, but someone walking by can show up in the reflections if you don't. It has a high spatial resolution where each pixel covers an area of about 4 mm square, and each pixel is sensitive to 0.05 degree C changes. It has already been shown that this technique can be used to quickly find defects and faults within the battery, but we wanted to try to simulate this behavior and at the same time extract um, material property values. So lock-in thermography involves tracking the temperature signal as a result of a periodic current input. In our case, a zero mean square wave as constant current pulses are easier to simulate. The plot on the bottom of the slide is a representative data set of what the outputs usually look like. And from this data set, we determine which characteristics we cared about the most and would like to predict and determine which parameters um, affects it the most. So there are a few voltage features we want to accurately uh, emulate, the size of the enclosing voltage envelope and the various voltage changes, which are determined by things such as the different resistances and their respective temperature dependences, and the cell's OCV behavior. We also want to match the temperature fluctuations that were caused by the periodic input signal, which gives us information on reaction entropy. And the separation between the max cell temperature and the average cell temperature tells us how well the battery materials can actually conduct heat. And finally, the time constant to reach the periodic steady state temperature gives us insight on heat transfer coefficients. So here are the model equations. It is based off of the newman tobias porous electrode theory, which is a streamlined DFN. We further simplified it so that the only parameters that were previously mentioned needed to be optimized. Further simplifications were made, such as linearizing the SOC and reaction kinetics because we're operating within such a small range of states when the score wave is being applied. This simple electrochemical model is coupled to a detailed local energy balance, and a few parameters, such as ionic conductivity and exchange current densities, were given temperature dependencies. This was all programmed into Compsol Multiphysics, and the optimization is done through the LiveLink feature with MATLAB. And the result of all this is 
an extracted parameter set that can project different square waves. We trained the model with the most strenuous square wave which had an amplitude of 4C in a period of 100 seconds. The experimental data was fed in and Comsol with MATLAB iteratively tested parameter values until the simulation output matched with what was given to it. The parameters needed for that match is shown in the bottom right, and we used those parameters to then simulate different square waves as a validation. The top right shows a 4C 50 second square wave, and the bottom left shows a 2C 100 second square wave. Both have reasonable matches, and only the operational conditions were adjusted between them. So now that we can infer a bunch of material properties from the lock in thermography experiment, even when it is coupled to electrochemical phenomena, what else can we do while the camera is recording this information? So using another con uh, non-contact sensor, we introduced a couple of laser profilers into the mix. Here are a couple of renders of the rig showing the holder, the lasers, the battery, and the IR camera. And here is a short video of me testing some scanning procedures with the rig while the IR camera is off screen, this time in real life inside of our lab. So we're still testing what we can actually do with this setup, but um, following are a couple of quick experiments I did just to see if everything is integrated well. So a quick test that I did where I wanted to introduce the largest amount of volume expansion I can think of was doing a CCCV full charge with a relatively high C rate. With this current profile, one would expect large expansions from fully charging the battery and also a good amount of thermally induced volume expansion from the generator heat. And since we can simultaneously get this information without touching the battery, here are the results of that. The laser's beam is only 10 millimeters wide, so this scan was actually only of the top strip of the battery's active material area, specifically the area closest to the tab, which is appropriately marked on the left-hand plot on the top with the thermography video right below it. So some locality can be observed from this scan, but it is currently a little difficult to see how it is working in relation to the local temperature. However, if I just look at the average value of that strip to generalize the behavior uh, in that area of the scan, we can see something interesting. As the CC portion is being applied, we see a rapid rise in temperature along with the battery thickness. But once the CV portion kicks in, the temperature starts to drop, but the expansion has basically plateaued, even though the battery is still being charged. So the thermally induced contraction is balancing out the expansion caused by charging the battery at its decaying rate. So it's like it's traveling along a contour from the plot that I'm about to bring up. So another experiment was just to take the square wave excitation that was used with our log-in thermography experiment and record the mechanical effects at the same time. So although the scanning procedure from before was alright, we opted to integrate an IR sensor instead of using the camera for highly specified local measurements, as shown in the schematic on the left. So this time there is no movement involved with the stages. A 4C 100 second period square wave was applied to the battery until a periodic steady state in temperature was achieved, but this time both the temperature and expansion measurements were kept recording until the cell temperature fell back down to the ambient after the current has been turned off. So we can see in this experiment that the expansion is almost entirely thermally driven given the blue portion of the right hand side plot. As the temperatures decreased, this expansion was linearly decreasing while the small SOC perturbations were just deviating it off of that line. So in conclusion, we implemented a streamlined physics-based 3D electrochemical thermal model and was able to successfully extract reasonable material properties by just using voltage and temperature data. Then we incorporated mechanical measurements to capture volume change along with the voltage and temperature effects. We recently finished some work on using this model to track changes in state of health that is depicted by changes in the parameter set for a different battery that has a different shape and chemistry. And furthermore, I uh, would like to make upgrades to this experimental setup so that more scanning procedures can be used, because right now it does generate quite a bit of vibration, um, which can be seen in the measurements.
And with that, uh, thanks for tuning in.